Alright, welcome back ladies and gentlemen to the Chupacabra Tutorials channel. I'm your host Larry and today we're back to take another look at some more Windows 10 settings, specifically the accounts section. So the account section of your settings is basically managing all of the different user accounts that are currently connected to your computer. And this is because Microsoft likes to do the same thing as like Google and Apple, where when you use one of their products, it's tied to like your email account, which is like your overarching profile for all of their services. So I've got mine logged into this computer and you can see on this panel, you can see what it is, what the name is associated with it. You're the administrator or whatever on this computer. And then you can manage your Microsoft account with uh, one of these, this link. And then down here, you can sign in with a local account instead if you'd rather not have your Microsoft email account attached to every single computer in your household. And then down here at the bottom, you have the option to add a profile picture and you can either use a connected webcam on your computer or you can browse for a picture that you've uploaded and attached somewhere into your hard drive. So down here on emails and accounts, it'll show you whatever email you currently have attached to this computer. And if you want to add additional emails to use other accounts or services, you can click on the button here at the top to add an account. You can then uh, use accounts used by other apps. Like you can add a Microsoft account or add a work or school account. I think that they also let you, if you want to use Outlook to check your email, you can, through the Outlook program itself, you can also add like your Gmail account and your Yahoo account or whatever, and you can kind of get all of your emails in one place instead of having to log into like four websites all the time. And so next up, you've got down here with sign in options. So this allows you to control like, do you want to sign in and log into your computer and unlock it using your face? Do you want to use a fingerprint? If you have a fingerprint scanner on your computer, I currently do not. Um, Windows also lets you log in two ways with a password. You can log in with your Microsoft account password, which a lot of people like to do. Or once you've done that periodically, you can change it so that you actually log in with a Windows 4 number pin number so that logging in is a little bit quicker so you don't have to constantly type in like a 26 character long password because you're super concerned about security. Likewise, if you have a physical key that you get from Microsoft or using one of the services that they support, you can use that physical key to log into your computer because obviously a hacker in Uzbekistan isn't going to have access to a key that's sitting in your hand. You can also sign in with your account password or you can use a picture password where you gotta like tap specific parts of a picture that you set up. So all of those controls are up here. You can require Windows Hello Sign In uh, for your account. So for improved security, only allow Windows Hello Sign In for Microsoft accounts on this device. Recommended. I have this off right now because honestly, I'm the only one who's ever gonna touch this computer at my house unless someone breaks in and steals it, in which case all of the passwords in the world won't save me from that. Uh, require a sign in when the PC wakes up from sleep. So this is always nice if someone comes to visit, you know, when I'm like playing with your computer and messing up settings. When it goes to sleep, it'll ask for a password before they can mess with anything. You can also do dynamic locking. So when you have like a phone set up on your computer, when you physically walk away with your phone from your computer a certain distance from like Bluetooth, then the computer will automatically lock. So that's always a really nice feature to have. Um, you can set it up so that when you restart your computer, any apps that were open that are easy for Microsoft to restart and open again will do so automatically. I leave that off because my computer already takes a little bit to boot up because I've got a lot of stuff going at any one given time. So that just lets me control better what starts up when I'm done with one thing, restart my computer and I wanna work on something else. And then down here for privacy, you can show your account details, like your email address on the sign-in screen. I don't like that at all, uh, especially if I'm on like a laptop and I'm out and about. I don't want people to like peek over my shoulder and try to like do something illicit with my, my email account. Either try to break in or like sign me up for something stupid or stalk me. 
And then this option down here is use my sign in info automatically to finish setting up my device after an update. So when you restart your computer to like apply a new Windows update, this will allow it so that it'll finish the process automatically for you. And then you don't have to like sit there and wait for it to restart and then enter your password again to finish the installation process. Uh, it's a thing that's kind of convenient to leave on. This I would only enable if you're in a place where you trust people like at home or maybe the office. Uh, but if you don't trust people around you, I would disable that kind of a deal. That way they can't get into your computer and mess with stuff when you're not there paying attention. Access work or school. So with this setting, you can add a work or school account and then you can remotely connect and share information to that account and you like get all that information on your desktop at home. It's really convenient if you want to set that up. Uh, at the same time, it also allows people at your work certain amounts of access to the information and private stuff on your computer. So just be aware of that and maybe keep work and private matters separate depending on what you like to keep on your computer. I don't know you, so leave that up to whatever you feel comfortable doing. Family and other users. So this little panel here lets you add additional family members to your computer so that they can log into their own accounts and not be all on the same administrator account, which can be confusing. It can lead to people who don't know what they're doing, like your kids installing stuff that has viruses. All that's kind of bad and a pain in the butt. So you can either set up a user account for them or you can add their Microsoft accounts to this computer so that they can log in separately and you can determine how much or how little or how much permissions they're given. Similarly, if it's not a member of your family, you can add like different other accounts to this computer. That way they definitely don't have permission to mess with anything. Kind of like a guest account. And then you can set this up as a kiosk down here at the bottom so that like guests can use it to get basic information and do basic tasks, which is kind of handy. And this little menu will walk you through that. And then down here at the bottom is the sync settings. And when you log in with your Microsoft account, like I have my PC and also my laptop, you can determine what information is automatically shared over the web between those two computers and synchronize. So you can synchronize your settings, which is always really good. That way you don't have to like set up the same settings on all your computers. Uh, you can synchronize the visual theme. I turn that off because I like my laptop to have a different theme. You can synchronize the saved passwords, language preferences, and other Windows settings. All of those are very convenient. And if you have pretty decent security on your laptop and you kind of keep an eye on it, I wouldn't worry about leaving these on. If you're concerned about someone borrowing your laptop and doing something dumb, turn these off. It's pretty, pretty straightforward kind of stuff. Otherwise, uh, yeah, I, I like them. They're convenient and I use them quite often. So that'll be it for this one, ladies and gentlemen. This has been the accounts section of the Windows 10 settings. I hope you found this explanation and walkthrough helpful. If you have any additional questions, throw those in the comment section below. I'll help you as best as I can. I'm not like the biggest guru on every single one of these settings, but I can help you Google it and figure it out depending on if I have time. Otherwise, if you want to hop into the discord that I've got set up for the channel, you might be able to get some better one on one help and somebody else who's also in there who's tech savvy might also be able to give you a hand. So that's it for this one, ladies and gentlemen, do the likey subscribey thing and I will catch you next time. Bye everybody and have a good one.